Hello and welcome to another episode of the All Around Access podcast. At the time of recording, we are two weeks away from the Olympic Games. Um, since the last episode, uh, the men's artistic team, the women's artistic team and the trampoline gymnasts set to compete for Team GB in Tokyo have been announced. So uh, you can find all you need to know about the gymnasts, um, as well as the full gymnastics schedule um, for the games, including the times of competition on the British Gymnastics website. By the time we release this episode, it will be closer to one week to go to the games. Um, and we have a gymnastics legend joining us today. Um, he'll also be heading out to Tokyo for his third Olympic games. So welcome to the podcast, Max Whitlock, MBE. Thank you, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? I think you're at Lillishaw at the moment, is that right? Yeah, yeah, we're up at Lillishaw. This is our third or fourth day. I'm so lost with the days at the moment, but we've started our bubble um, before we head out to Tokyo and it's already kind of going quite quick, which is nice. Um, it's good to be kind of with the team um, together, training and preparing. It feels kind of even a bit more real now. It feels like we're in that real Olympic prep and, it, and it's coming around quick, which is really cool. Uh, so that's great. And how how are you keeping yourself amused there then? Because obviously you're kind of like you say you've created this bubble. <laughs> what what are you doing to keep busy other than gymnastics? Um, trying to do all sorts of stuff. You know, switch it up a little bit. We we're literally big kids. A lot of us. So we went on Amazon and ordered some remote control helicopters just to keep ourselves a little bit busy. Sometimes um, we're playing bowls later today um, because nice. today is our day off. Um, so we thought we'd keep ourselves, you know, busy in some kind of way, nothing too strenuous. So bowls would be quite nice. Um, be good to play with the boys. Um, and other stuff, just, just chilling, just chilling in our rooms. Um, just enjoying the time together. Um, obviously spending this time with the boys is, is good before we head out to an Olympic games and, you know, really, really kind of focus on what we need to do. Obviously a lot of the time is as well spent recovering, um, during this time because we've got you know, control comps and practice competitions um, kind of pretty much nearly every other day here. Um, so there's a lot going on, um, but it's it's kind of building, which is really exciting. And I, I've i heard that you've been doing some hairdressing as well. Is that um, a passion project of yours? Um, is that something you've been roped into doing? It's, to be honest, no, it's, it's something that um, I was kind of forced to learn in lockdown, otherwise my hair would have looked an absolute state. So um, in lockdown, literally beginning of lockdown, I was like, right, I need I need to cut my own hair because my hair grows so quickly. I have to cut. I, have to, I used to have to get my hair cut every every week. Um, that's how fast it grows. So I needed to do something about it. So I taught myself how to cut it. Um, and I like to think I got better and better as lockdown went on um, and, and the more I practiced. So now it's worked out that actually here at, at Lillishaw, forming a bubble and away when we go to Olympics. It's, it's a long period of time. It's going to be over four weeks away. So it looks like that I'm the designated hairdresser. Whitlock Barbers is, is, is here. <laughs> well, that's not a bad, uh, bad talent to have. I'm sure I'd like to say I think there was some horrendous haircuts after lockdown. So um, and as you say, four weeks, that's four haircuts in your time. So uh, real. Well, exactly. Obviously, we We've just talked about obviously that you say the the kind of you touched on the preparation side of things. You know, you've been to, to three Olympic Games. This must be very different um, preparation that you've been used to in the past. Um, yeah, it is in a lot of different ways, and I think it even if we didn't have this strange situation and and the whole pandemic that we've been through, I think it was, still would have been different. You know, I'm learning every single year, um, but I think it's just kind of been exaggerated this time around you know it's been a strange time for everybody they've you know gone through challenges which they've had to be adaptable with and it's no different for us athletes you know it's not an ideal preparation on what you would like um towards olympic games if you talk about being a year out you don't want to be stuck in your home um but it's a challenge and it's definitely a challenge that the whole world has been involved in rolling the same boat um, which is, you know, which shows it's an equal playing field, but also it's a challenge that actually as an athlete, for me, I kind of saw it as, you know, this is something that I can gain motivation from. There was definitely times in the kind of, in, in the periods where we was in and out of lockdowns for our country where motivation dipped a little bit. There's no doubt about that. Happy to be honest with that because I think it was the same with everybody. Um, but then there was also definitely times where it peaked and that's the times where, you know, I got my head in the right place because I felt like I wanted to be one of these athletes that comes out of lockdown and comes out of this situation in the same position or if not better. So 
I had my pommel horse in the garden. I was doing loads of different fitness exercises in my house, trying to literally keep up my fitness levels, trying to keep up my joints moving and maintenance on, on everything possible so that I could be in a good shape when I come out. And, and looking back now, I'm kind of really pleased with what I've done. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a really good lesson, isn't it, for any of any gymnasts listening to this podcast that, you know, and a really honest account from you there, Max, that actually your motivations levels did go up and down. And, you know, there are hard times yeah. and you, you've got to push through them. And it's been, I guess, a strange year. But as you say, um, everybody's coming out on the same, you know, it's been across the world. It isn't just something unique to our country. So, um, so yeah, so it's going to be the same definitely. for everybody out there. Um, well, like I say, it's, it's really exciting because um, we haven't seen much live sport for you know a long time. We're obviously kicking mm. off with all sorts of other things at the moment with football and tennis, but um, it's a really exciting time. Um, it's the biggest sporting event in the calendar. Um, and I know there's a lot of people excited to see um, you guys compete out in Tokyo. So we're going to look um, back at some of your past experiences um, of the games before looking ahead to Japan in the summer. Okay. Earlier in June, um, just for our listeners, the um, a bit of a recap, the artistic and trampoline gymnasts were named. So the men's team alongside yourself, Max, obviously, Gianni Regini Moran, Joe Fraser and James Hall. Um, in the women's team um, will be Alice Kinsella, Emily Morgan, um, Jessica Gadarova and Jennifer Gadarova. And the trampoline gymnasts are Bryony Page and Laura Gallagher. So it's a really exciting group of gymnasts. Um, and actually, um, out of the 10 named, eight will be competing at their first um, Olympics. So going back to London, your first Olympics, can you remember what it was like being selected and the build up to it? Um, yeah, crazy how you think how fast that's gone when you think how long ago that was. Um, but yeah, I can remember it, you know, it was a crazy time for me. Um, it was a time where I was a young gymnast, I was 19. I was literally trying to prove myself as much as I could. I was going to World Cups left, right and centre to try and prove my kind of level was there and trying to make, make that team. That's the position I was in. Um, and I remember getting a phone call. It was a month before the Olympic Games. Um, I got the phone call to say that I, I'd made the team, which is incredible. Um, you know, I'd gone into London 2012 with kind of little experience in terms of being on big stages, uh, big competitions against, you know, the best gymnasts in the world. You know, I hadn't done a world championships before. Um, I'd done Europeans and I'd done Commonwealth Games. Um, so I was going in as a real youngster, kind of unexpected to produce any kind of medal result or anything like that. So for me, my mindset was going in and just going to enjoy the experience. I felt very lucky and fortunate actually that I had the opportunity to go to a home games, which is rare for any athlete. So I kind of wanted most of that opportunity. Um, and then along with the team, just, you know, go out there and enjoy it with everyone, you know, spend time with the boys and just give it our best shot. I think that's kind of the mindset of us all. And, you know, it really kind of paid off. And I think, you know, getting the, the, the first team medal in, in over a hundred years and then getting my bronze, I think actually it taught me so much and it actually ended up being a huge platform and a springboard for me to realise right, how did I compete to that in that environment, with that atmosphere, with that support, with that pressure, you know, what can I take from that and what can I use to help me kind of propel and trying to, trying to hit my next target. So it was a huge stepping stone for me. Yeah, and like you just talked about, you know, you obviously wanted to take things away from that being your first Olympic. So if you were to turn and talk to those eight, uh, you know, the, the gymnasts who this is their first Olympic Games, what would your best piece of advice be for them? Um, try not to get overwhelmed by everything. You know, it's uh, it's kind of, you know, they're, they're all experienced in their own right, 100%. You know, we all have confidence in, you know, everyone knows how to prepare individually and they know what to do to get the best out of themselves. But the Olympic Games is kind of, wrap all the competitions up and put it into one it's bigger in every scale um so i think it's quite easy to kind of look around get overwhelmed you know that's in the village that's that's outside of the village that's in the training halls competition halls everywhere so i think if you can kind of for me i try to look at olympic games as much as i possibly can like any other competition and that's what's really important you know it, it can be their first one but they just need to go in and just enjoy the experience think of it like it's just another competition day it's another competition on the calendar um and and you know fingers crossed it goes to plan you know all you can do is prepare for as much as you possibly can prepare for and you know this time we're, we're having to do different stuff you know we're putting ourselves in different pressured environments um 
for example, I've done, I put a pommel horse in an empty hall, um, trying to, you know, recreate environments that we're not really used to. And I think as a team, we just, we're, we're doing all we can. And then it's just go out there and give it your best shot. There's no point putting too much pressure on yourself. There's no point trying to overthink other things and thinking, you know, this is my be all and end all because it's the Olympic Games. It's another comp. Um, just go out there and, and, and try your best. That's that's the probably the best advice I'd give, you know, not think about it too much. Just, just go and do what you do. Just go and enjoy it. Yeah. And again, I think that's great advice for any young gymnast, you know, um, when you go to, no matter whether it's, you know, a major competition for that, for that gymnast, it's still just another competition. You know, you go out there and you do your thing. I always say to my gymnast, you train like you compete, you compete like you train and you just keep it the same. So I think uh, some good mm-hmm. advice there for, for anyone listening, not just Olympians, to be honest. Um, so you obviously, you obviously talked about it briefly there. Um, bronze medal in London I remember I remember being there um and it was just the atmosphere was just uh, electric um how how special was it being on the competition floor that day um you know playing your part you know what what do you remember most about that because you've had a lot of achievements since um it's been like you say nine years I can't believe it's been nine years since 2012 um so what do you remember most um, just the atmosphere, really. I think that was the best thing. You going going around with that team of boys was incredible. Um, and when you go around and you're hitting routines successfully as a team, it just builds and builds and builds. You got, I mean, we've got six six apparatus that we're going around, and if you continuously do well on each of them as you're going around, um, that excitement, that atmosphere builds, and you have got to try and contain that. But also, you kind of you can feel it in the atmosphere, and I think that's what was crazy um, in that kind of scenario because I remember getting to floor, floor was our last piece, team final. Um and I remember just walking up um ready to compete my floor routine. And the audience, because the audience for me, I don't look at any scores. I don't look at anything like that. So realistically I don't really know what's going on, where we're placing or anything. But obviously the audience do. And you know they're keeping well like high track on that. So I literally was standing there ready to start my floor routine and the crowd wasn't just cheering, like it was a constant noise. It was like a constant roar. Um, literally hardly hear myself think or anything. Um, and that kind of that kind of experience has stuck with me a lot because I can look back at that and actually think, you know, nothing has ever compared to that um, in terms of support, atmosphere, everything. Nothing has compared to it. Nothing has actually even come close to it. So we can all kind of look at that experience and actually think, you know, if we manage to compete under that pressure, um, we can compete anywhere. Yeah, definitely. Um, it was like I say, it was just a great moment. I mean, how do you, you obviously just mentioned there that you don't look at the scores. I mean, there are normally like massive screens in the arena everywhere. Um, <laughs> is that just a case of keeping your composure and just focusing on kind of the t- task at hand as such? Yeah, I just think about what I need to do, you know, and I, the reason why I don't look at scores is because it's a, it can be a huge distraction. You know, there, there's no point kind of me looking and thinking this person scored this score this is what I need to beat because I'm not going to then change my routine or do anything like that based on what another team is doing you know I've prepared for what I'm preparing for and you know I've trained to try and get the best score that I can come out with in a competition day so you know you've got to control what you can control and that's me my routines you know and and all together coming together as a team you know our atmosphere our kind of um, rapport as a team as we're going around how we feel um, that's the stuff that we can control not other people's scores or anything like that sometimes like you say it's on the big screen and it's announced it's hard to avoid um, but I, I do I do my best to try and literally block it out and, and not look just focus on what we need to do yeah well it's a good point like you say it's not something that's in within your control and it's good to focus on those things um, mm-hmm. so if we look from then London to Rio, so we fast forward, uh, 2016. Um, yeah. What was the difference between the kind of being announced, I guess, on the London team to being announced on the Rio team? You know, fast forward four years. Um, I think, you know, off the back of London, um, me and Scott, my coach, sat down and we kind of set a four year plan. And I think that was the big difference from the start to actually get into, to get into Rio. We set a four year plan with with two goals in mind and that was one to be recognised as an all round gymnast. Um I didn't get the opportunity to do all round in London so I wanted to have that improve myself to get that opportunity in Rio. And the second was to be in the position to have the potential to gain a title and obviously make history. So those were the two things. 
um, that was the four year plan that we kind of worked towards um, and tried to get myself in a position to, to do those two things when the time come. Um, so it's almost like London 2012 was all about the experience going as a young one. Um, you know, a kind of a real kind of underdog, not looking to produce any result to all of a sudden now, four years later, going with real targets, solid targets, kind of a job to do. Um, and a lot more pressure on my shoulders. Um, so it was, a, it was a really kind of different experience um, for me. But, you know, when we when we got there, it was kind of trying to break into the same mindset as I had in London. You know, like I said, I learned so much from, from that Olympic Games to try and teach me to how to compete to my best. And that was going out there and staying chilled, enjoying the experience. So I tried to kind of take all the pressure off as much, much uh, off my shoulders as much as I could and, and go in with the same mindset despite everything else that all the other pressures that were going on around. Yeah. I mean, that obviously paid off uh, in a big way. Yeah. Um, you, you said you'd obviously hit, you'd set yourself targets. Um, and one of those was obviously kind of to become a champion or, or such. Did you ever kind of dream of coming home with two titles? Did that, did that cross your mind at any point? Um, not even for a second. It, it was crazy. I was, What's crazy, so obviously I made floor and pummel final and got gold in both of those. And, you know, I, I'd had the target of, you know, a potential to gain a title, thinking, you know, pommel horse would be my best shot. Obviously, it's always been my main focus throughout my whole career. I've trained twice as much on the pommel horse as any other piece over many, many years. And I was happy to make floor final in Rio to warm me up for pummel, um, to kind of ease my nerves. The first piece is always the most nerve wracking. Um, so I was happy to be in there just to settle, um, settle into the competition. So to kind of get gold on that was crazy, um, real, real crazy experience. And, and the whole time through that final, I had my head down again. I wasn't, I wasn't looking at scores because I knew I had a further job to do on pommel horse. Um, Christian Thomas was, was also in the final. Um, I was third man up and as the, as everyone, as the gymnast kind of went through and, and the numbers kept going, numbers kept going up. Um, the crowd was booing and cheering at different times. I had no clue what was going on. I had my head down. And Christian was like, Max, do you want to know where you're placing? I was like, no, no, I'm okay, thank you. Scott was like, Max, do you want to know? Like, you seriously don't want to know? And I was like, no, no, I'm, I'm okay. And it got to the last man up. Scott literally punched me like that and was like, Max, you're Olympic champion. And literally emotions just hit me like a ton of bricks. And I always kind of looked at athletes on TV and if they reach the pinnacle of their career, um, a lot of athletes burst into tears because they can't control that emotion. And I always looked at that and thought, you know, I think I don't feel like if I'd done that, I don't feel like I'd be like that. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't help it. It was crazy, crazy, crazy experience. And I'll never forget it. So you're telling me you basically, or right up until that point, had, did you just have no idea? I mean, I'm guessing you knew it was a good routine and you'd done what you could do, but you had no idea. And then suddenly it was like, <laughs> Olympic yeah, yeah, like literally, yeah, honestly, no, no clue. Um, yeah, of course, I was happy with my routine, but there was amazing floor workers in that final. Um, you know, and I wasn't the one picked off to, to win. You know, people wouldn't have put place bets on me to win. They just wouldn't have. Um, you know, I, I'd like to think if you, if you said, like, what would have been amazing going into that final, if I got a bronze, I'd have been extremely happy um, coming out with a gold. I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it, and I had no clue until the last minute. Oh, that's that's so nice. I don't think many people would have necessarily known that. Um, I might mm. have to look back at the footage just to see, just to see your reaction. <laughs> yeah. um, and obviously, we, you know, not forgetting, you know, that all around uh, as well. Um, that's, you yeah. know, you said you said it yourself. You wanted to become known as an all around gymnast, and we know at the time, and even now, there's there's a lot of incredible all around gymnasts. But that was a like amazing achievement. How, how, how was how great was it for you at that time to show your strength across all of the apparatus, and how did that kind of compare to the individual uh, apparatus? um it's massively like up there it's high up there and like you say a lot, a lot of people actually forget about it i think because it was bronze but in in some ways that bronze means more um than the golds in some ways um because it's so much harder to do you've got to get all six right on on, on that one day and 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 like like what you mentioned there it was my target to be proven like i wanted to prove myself as an all-rounder 
and you know getting that bronze you know with you know Oleg and Kohei Uchimura uh, you know above me two people that I massively massively respect you know Kohei Uchimura the, the gold medal winner was has been my idol for a very long time so and I always said kind of if I was to come second to Uchimura I feel like I'd won you know he's the greatest gymnast that's ever lived I, I believed um, and yeah, just being on there, having that achievement, standing on that third place podium in the all round, you know, a lot of people, a lot of gymnasts definitely look at the all round as it's the ultimate. You know, everyone has to crack six pieces at that one time, which is a tough task. Yeah, no, I uh, I don't know how you did it. It was an incredible performance, <laughs> and like you said, you know, looking back, you, you, you look at the golds and things like that, but on all around medal and um, go across like you say on the six pieces that was very impressive um so um yeah so great to look back across that actually and it's really nice to talk through some of the memories with you and um, like you say looking back it's i mean it's now what five years since 2016 because of the because of the things mm -hmm. that have happened so actually you know it's good to kind of uh, refresh but we're going to look ahead now um to the, this summer uh, and tokyo games <laughs> As we record this, we talked about at the beginning that we're two weeks away at the moment um, before we start qualifying. Um, how are preparations going um, for you in general uh, and the team? We've talked a bit about what you're doing at Lillishaw, but just a bit more about the gymnastics side. Um, yeah, I think everyone's pleased. I think everyone's in a, in a kind of a good place at the moment, which is really nice to see. You know, like I said, we're, we're doing everything we can to make sure that we put as much pressure as possible. We have judges that call in over Zoom to judge us, um, you know, whilst we're up at Lillyshaw because we're in that tight bubble. No one else is allowed to come in. Um, but, you know, training, yeah, we, we're really pleased. We just need to now, we've got a couple more kind of control competitions to do as we as we build up. Um, but it, it's kind of really getting now to the fine detail, which is a nice part if you're in a good place. You know, it's about kind of focusing on the smaller details, the smaller deductions that you can kind of, get rid of to make sure that you your routine is as clean as possible and it's nice to kind of be at that stage because you go through the harder stages of sheer numbers of routines trying to build up fitness and build up stamina where well, we're kind of coming out of that stage now and we're reducing our training hours um kind of tapering off very slowly and focusing on the most important days which are the routine days and on the off, off days we have you know just a smaller session and then a lot of recovery stuff so yeah, there's a lot that goes into it and you know it's it's going along the right right path so far for everybody so hopefully it can continue that way well and i was just thinking as well when you're talking about that obviously i remember seeing something on instagram of where you'd put your pommel horse in a mm. is it the sports hall next to your gym and just talk us through that yes. what you did because yes. for anyone has not seen it um yeah so at south essex um before we come up for the bubble i scott organized that he hired out the hall next to us an empty hall um we moved the pommel horse uh into there literally just on its own so there's only a pommel horse in the, in, the, in the hall and we actually got some of the recreational younger gymnasts in to like form a little small audience to put me under a bit more pressure so you know and, and going in there doing a routine um, it was live with judges. It was live with the team as well. So there was a lot of different kind of external pressures going on, which was amazing to do it because I felt nervous. I felt like it was a competition, um, which was so important. You know, it's so good to kind of practice that. It doesn't matter. And that's where I say, you know, it doesn't matter how many people are watching. It can be 20, 50 like there was watching there. Or it can be 6 million on TV. It doesn't matter. You know, everything's the same. And if you kind of have that mindset, and you put yourself under that pressured environment that you can kind of try and replicate as much as possible. So that's what we was doing there. And it was a really, really good practice. And I was pleased because it, it boosted my confidence so much because I was really pleased with the routine. Oh, fab. And as I say, I imagine it boosted all of the kids' uh, moods as well to be able to watch you and um, perform that stuff. But that was lovely. Um, yeah, I think they so, quite liked it, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so this will be um, your third Olympic Games, as we've talked about. Um, and now, if our records are correct, now I'll have this written down, so don't blame me if this is wrong. <laughs> you're <laughs> just the seventh, uh, the seventh British gymnast to compete at three Olympic Games. Um, so what do you think is the key um, to your success, I guess? You know, is it, could you, can you pinpoint something? Is it, uh, you know, a mixture of things? I think it's a mixture of a lot of things. But there's, yeah, there's a few things that definitely help me. Now, I think naturally I'm quite a relaxed person. 
I think that's helped me um, not overthink things too much. Like I said, the biggest tip that I, I could give to kind of people making their Olympic debut is to not overthink things too much. Don't let things get overwhelming for you. I think naturally I do that. Um, I think another thing is naturally I forget about my past results, um, which makes me feel like I go into future competitions like it's my first with the same hunger, the same ambition, um, further targets, everything like that. So I think that's kind of really important that, you know, I don't consciously do it. I just naturally forget what I've previously done. And I, I think that's a really important part of me kind of not looking back, but actually moving forward to what I want to achieve next. Um, and I think the other one is, you know, it kind of tails on for that. It's setting targets. You know, the moment that I started setting targets in my career, it was literally a game changing moment because instead of just going along a, a path where you can just plod along, years go by and you don't really learn too much, don't really do too much because you haven't got those kind of checkpoints that you want to hit along the way. As soon as you kind of set those short term, mid term, long term targets, a lot of the time you, Ten, nine, nine out of ten times you achieve them a lot faster than you expect to as well because you've got that kind of clear pathway that you're working towards so as soon as I started doing that literally changed the course of my you know of my career and kind of made me take it into my own hands and achieve what I wanted to achieve so there's loads of things but there's some definitely three key points that I think has helped me kind of get to where I have but also helped me with with, with longevity as well yeah definitely thank you that's really insightful um so in Tokyo, um, have you been told what the plans for when you get out there? We know it's going to be a bit different um, from the previous Olympic Games, like with the village and everything. Um, little bits and bobs, yeah, we've been kept up to date with kind of every update from British Gymnastics, from T. Um, you know, there's stuff changing all the time, constantly, um, which we can all kind of understand at the moment. You know, it's a different time. Nobody's used to it. Everybody's kind of learning um, as we go along. Um, but it's it will be slightly different, you know. A lot a lot of things will be slightly different. Everything will be a lot stricter in terms of COVID protocols. I know there's going to be lots that we need to do. Um, we're doing a lot here while we're up here at Lillyshaw, um, doing tests every day, and I'm sure it'll be the same when we get out there. Um, but just you know, tightened a lot more as well. Um, you know, it's all about kind of making sure everybody's safe. Everybody wants this to be successful in terms of results, but they also want it to be successful in terms of keeping everyone safe as well. So. Yeah, there will be different stuff. There's going to be different stuff in terms of audiences. We're getting updated all the time. Um, you know, first of all, we wasn't sure about overseas audience. There's going to be no overseas audience. Um, then there was going to be a small number of Japanese audience, and now we're not sure. So, you know, we're just kind of like, like I think with this whole period of time, it's just being adaptable, um, being flexible, and just kind of just like I said, just go with the flow. Um, we're lucky and we have to feel grateful that Olympics is even going ahead. You know, back take it back a year and a half or whatever it was now. The Olympics could have definitely not been announced as postponed. It could have definitely been announced as cancelled easily. So we're very lucky that it's actually still going ahead. We're nearly there um, and we've got the flight out next week. So, you know, things are going to be stricter. There's going to be a lot of things put in place, but um, we're prepared for that. Yeah, definitely. Like you say, still exciting times and taking it day by day mm. sounds like the best plan. Um, these Olympics were slightly different again for you, um, as not just with everything that's happened, but you're now a dad, um, which is yep. very exciting. Um, yep. And so what's that going to be like? Because obviously, I mean, I know it's hard to be away, isn't it, from your kids if you're if you're going you know you've got to kind of be in this bubble now and you're away for a while are they going to be at home watching what what's their plan whilst you're away i hope they'll be watching um i hope willow will be interested in watching me on tv she started to kind of recognize me on on tv here and there a bit more now and be a bit a bit more interested it's good because we're obviously a few days into this bubble and she's still interested in seeing me on facetime which is nice because usually it gets to about a week when i'm away and she's got she's got no interest in seeing me on facetime anymore um so yeah, fingers crossed that continues for um, the whole trip. Um, but yeah, it's it's difficult. You know, I've always struggled with going away um, the ho throughout the whole of my career. Uh, I'm kind of someone that loves being at home, um, spending time with family and just being chilled and being in my own environment. I love that. So now to throw kind of um, the whole pandemic in the mix where we was at home, which for me was a, you know, I could take some positives about being at home. I managed to spend all that time with with Leah and Willow and everything. Um, 
but you kind of got used to it. And, you know, now going away, I think it's a little bit harder because we've all been stuck at home a little bit more. Um, so, yeah, it's a long time. Oh, I'm missing them already. You know, it's only been a few days, but, you know, we've, we've got a long time away and this bubble just kind of extends that period. And we've got obviously the Olympics straight to Tokyo as well. So it's going to be, you know, kind of four and a half weeks ish. I think that's what it is um, we're away for. Um, so by the end of it, I'm sure I'll be looking forward to kind of getting back home. Um, and yeah, fingers crossed they would have um, hopefully watched the whole thing, I hope. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they will. Um, does, it give you a different, <laughs> does it give you like a different perspective being a dad? You know, do you approach your gymnastics in, in any different way or see things in a different way when you're, now you're a dad? I think a lot, yeah, I think everyone says it. I think, you know, having having children actually does put a lot of things into perspective and it definitely did for me um it definitely throws the lenses in being a, an athlete um in terms of recovery sleep how your time spent after your training everything like that but it's massively thrown so many positives into my training as well you know I've always, I always speak about kind of a balance is is absolutely key in your life and you know I can come back from a, a bad session and if Willow's waiting at the front door for me and can't wait for me to get back and just play with it then you know, it's it's literally forcing a balance into my life. So, you know, there's 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 amazing things from it, and I feel like, you know, I I've got that another little person that now I want to make proud. And you know, I I will always wanted to have children when I was young and still doing gymnastics at this level because I want her to come and travel around the world. Obviously, she can't travel this time because of restrictions, but I wanted to follow me around and you know hopefully go to all these amazing different countries and have an experience and then obviously see me compete and see me do gymnastics in real life rather than just kind of this is what I used to do I, did, I don't want that just see, seeing it as a video you know I wanted to see f for real why what I do which that's a whole motive, more, more motivation for me to con continue on to uh, Paris and try and stay at this level. Well definitely and I'm sure your uh, fans will be excited to hear that you've got plans to keep going um, as well <laughs> yeah. as possible. Um, so let's just finish off um, talking about the competition itself then um, over in Tokyo. What, first up, what apparatus are you planning on doing um, when you're out there in qualifying? Do you know yet? So I'm doing three apparatus. Um, I'm doing pummels, of course, and then parallel bars and high bar. Um, pummels is obviously my main focus as an individual, um, but then to help the team, um, to back up the team and hopefully produce solid, clean routines uh, on parallel bars and high bar. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to kind of going out there and competing on those three. And what are your hopes then for the competition? I know um, naturally you want to do as best you can, but have you kind of set goals, targets? What's, what's your hopes for this competition? Um, I always try not to think about kind of medal results. Um, I, it, it's getting more increasingly difficult because of the pressure and expectancy, you know, people have um, through previous results, but I try and keep it at the back of my mind. You know, I really, really just try and think, you know, I want to go perform the best of my can, best that I can. Um, if I can do a clean routine, successful routines on everything that I do, then I'll be happy. You know, if I perform to the best of my ability um, and hopefully, you know, I, I, I can have the potential to, to achieve what I want to achieve. But, um, you know, it's, it's all about those clean routines. That's what it's all about. And I think it's the same for all of us boys. You know, we've got that team team kind of scenario that we want to obviously massively focus on it's the first one um you know as, as a final event the team final so we want to make sure that we kind of just all prepare as we can stay nice and chill go out there and i think everyone has the same mindset in terms of just go and do your job let's not worry about what anyone any, anything else not worried about you know we want to try and aim for this medal or that it's not it's about kind of doing our job and, and you know anything like that any rewards or, or anything like that can come hopefully after if we do a good one yeah brilliant it sounds like you're all focused and ready to do the job um and mm -hmm. exciting times like i say um max thank you it's been so great to have you on um just to get to speak to you one-on-one -on -one, have a bit more information and to hear things in a little bit more detail um so thanks so much for joining us um no i know i i know i'd like to and i'm sure everybody else would like to wish you um and the rest of the team the best of luck in tokyo um we'll definitely all be supporting um from back home um your family and all everybody um so uh, so thanks so much for joining us um thank you for everybody for listening um we hope to release a couple of episodes of the podcast during the games so please do stay tuned for that 
and, and make sure you follow us on Spotify and Apple Music and subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified when the next episode is out. Um, so thanks again, Max. Um, we wish you all the best of luck. And to our listeners, we will see you very soon. Thank you very much. Appreciate everyone's support as well. Always appreciate it. So thank you.